Summit 2022, the Apostolic Church International UK Area A presents Expansion Summit London 2022. This is an international impartation summit under the theme Six Charge. The summit objective is to influence and impact the world with kingdom principles. Remember, you can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. Jim Ron. The summit date is from Monday the 24th to Sunday the 30th of October 2022. Venue is London, UK. For all details, kindly visit our website www.expansionsummitlondon.org. You can also call us on plus 447-835-701-767 or plus 447-930-385-536. Expansion Summit 2022 is your season of increase and your time for expansion. Thinking of coming to Ghana now or later? Wondering where and how to go about your stay while in Ghana? Have you heard and want to experience Ghana from her food to music to culture to heritage and to tourist sites? Denilex Travel and Tours is ready to hold you down. Denilex Travel and Tours is your ultimate travel partner right from the airport to wherever your destination may be. Denilex is well equipped to handle your travel needs and be your guide throughout your stay in Ghana. Connect with us on social media at denilex underscore group or visit our website at www.denilexcompanylimited.com or call plus 233-744-431. The experience of Denilex Travel and Tours is always worth reliving. Try us. Denilex Travel and Tours, your ultimate travel partner. This is Top Online Radio UK, the top Ghanaian radio station in the UK. Hailing from the eastern corridors of London, we bring you news, views, music, interviews, trending issues, and what have you. Tune in to us 24 7 on our free mobile radio app. Download our free app from the Play Store and the App Store. Just search for Top Online Radio UK. Download the free mobile app and tune in to us 24 7. We stream our programs live on Facebook and YouTube. Just find us on YouTube and Facebook by searching for Top Online Radio UK. We welcome your views, comments, Critiques, suggestions, etc. Just get in touch on our station line 079 029 That's 079 If you are interested in working with us, as a radio presenter, a radio host, or a radio panelist, do get in touch and let's talk. Call us on 079-029-44398. If you want to advertise on our radio, just get in touch and let's talk. 079 Zero two nine four four three nine eight. If you want to sponsor any of our programs, get in touch and let's talk. Top Online Radio UK, the top Ghanaian radio station in the UK. The man come on. The man come on.
Abrojire for Ghana for listen to Ohima B this and every Tuesday evening 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. UK time for our evening talk show with Man Komo. Join the conversation, family issues, social issues, our emotions, child upbringing, about our emotions, a man to tell your emotions, a few shares, a man must look at Don't miss this show this and every Tuesday evening 8 to 9 p.m. UK time. Listen to a Man Komo on Top On. Online Radio UK. You can watch the program live on Facebook at Top Online Radio UK. You can tune in to us by visiting our website www.toponlinestation.com or you can download our radio app directly from the Play Store or the App Store. You can also tune in to us on Modern Ghana Radio, Ghana Web Radio page, mytuner.com and all third party radio platforms. Join the conversation what you trying to sing? Don't miss this show. This and every Tuesday, 8 to 9 p.m. UK time. Only on Top Online Radio UK. You don't want to miss this. Next grail. Listen to DJ G Nice on Top Online Radio UK. This and every Tuesday evening, 4 to 6 p.m. UK time. As he brings you an mixed player. What's in the mix? It's really anything goes. Social issues. Cultural issues. Diaspora issues. Ghanaian issues. It really cuts across all the board. Listen to DJ G Nice. This is an every Tuesday afternoon, 4 to 6 p.m. UK time. Don't miss this show. Join the conversation. What's going on? Next prayer. Only on Top Online Radio UK. You can listen to this program live on Facebook and YouTube. Just search for Top Online Radio UK. You can also tune in live on our website toponlinestation.com Download our free radio mobile app from the Play Store and the App Store. You can also get the download links from our website toponlinestation.com Don't miss the show. Join the chat. Join the conversation. Let's talk. Join TJT Live this and every Tuesday afternoon 4 to 6 p.m. UK Time. You don't want to miss this. This program is proudly sponsored by Certified Accountant Limited, a firm of Ghanaian accountants in the UK. You can reach them for all your accounting and tax matters on 0208-226-4933. That's 0208-226-4933. Or you can visit their website, certifiedaccountants.org. At Certified Accountant Dot all. DJ Unice twice as much. Nice. Let's get ready to rumble. Ghana for a British for UK for join your highness. No, 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 no. On Top Online Radio UK for our current affairs talk show, Trending Digest. This and every Thursday evening, 8 to 9 p.m. UK time. What's going on? What's trending? What's in the news? Join Nana Youngson to digest these and all stories making headlines in Ghana, UK, US, Europe, and the world over. Don't miss this show. This is an every Thursday evening, 8 to 9 p.m. UK time. What's trending? Don't miss this show. Trending Digest. You can watch this program live on Facebook at Top Online Radio UK or download our radio app from the Play Store and Apple Store or visit our website toponlinestation.com. This program is proudly sponsored by Certified Accountants Limited, a firm of Ghanaian accountants in the UK. You can reach them on 0208-226-4933. That's 0208-226-4933. 4933. Don't miss this show. Trending Digest. A bush for a brass song. It's time, it's time, it's time for In His Presence. I believe, sir, uh, Obiawe. This is DJ KB. 
Top Online Radio UK. I said I'm on Minimono every Monday, 8 to 9 p.m. UK time. Uh, it's time for in his presence. Hey, you may dear, any Reverend Jacob Vanderpoor, it is Monday, and you may be here. I tell you, I'm here. I tell you, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And to immediately say, why a crowd? We are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. You can also listen to us on our website. Just go to our website, www.toponlinestation.com. Toponlinestation.com. So, go in the middle of the page, you know. I will be home up, download link, or wait me a download. Come on, come on, come on. And I say um, you can download our app from the Play Store or the App Store. I ain't any Yabakwa. I will encourage you, sir. With me, I bring up every Monday. Beer, I'll be a kind of one year train with your uncle Pong and him. A tea on your uncle Pong, same na your bomb pie. Ain't he without wasting my time from more and more your Facebook over and I wash. Na obisu etimi etibi. Mwa moso emoshe yon YouTube moso utimi a share all the same. Enti Brian Sebredo Minfa Reverend Vanderpoy Emra na yen share em komono ase. I Good evening, sir. Welcome to In His Presence. How are you, sir? Good evening, DJ KB. <laughs> I'm doing great. The Lord has blessed How us. How is the family? Thank you for How having me. How is the family me. and the network? The family are great. The family are great. Network is good. We thank God for everything. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I will leave it to you. So you give us what the Lord has in stock for us. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I will take this opportunity to thank the top of land radio and my presenter dj kb mm. it's always a pleasure to be allowed to come on this radio program mm. also you viewer listener we love you so much we thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to join us on this program mm. in this presence there is fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Mm -hmm. He will direct us in the right path. Therefore, let's give thanks unto the Lord. In all things, the Bible says we should give thanks unto yes. the Lord. How far he has brought us, we celebrate his goodness mm -hmm. tonight. The, the uh, steadfast love of the Lord I knew every moment. Great is the faithfulness of God. And I want to thank God for your life, for the life of your family. And I know because our Redeemer lives, all things shall work together for our good. And I pray that you will hear the oracles of God tonight. You will not hear the voice of a man. I will not speak. I pray that the Spirit of God will take control, that I may not speak the enticing words of man's wisdom. But the Spirit of God will be demonstrated tonight. Wherever you are, whatever be your need, I pray that as you wait on God, just as we share the word, begin to pray and ask God to liberate you. Amen. In Jesus' name, as we go ahead, we will pray here and there. And I know you will have a testimony that will tickle the ears of people. God bless you for joining us. Pleasure is mine again. Mm -hmm. And over the weeks, over the weeks, we've been uh, dealing with the sermon on the month. I, 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 when we began, I said to all of you, it's a very broad subject. Every believer or Christian will know. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. We haven't even finished the Matthew chapter 5. 
so far by the grace of God, we've done the Beatitudes, which is the blessedness. From the blessedness, we saw a Christian who can be typified as salt or light. Amen. In darkness, we have to be the light. And we have to be the salt to be tasteful. And we've spoken about righteousness, having right standing with God. Every believer of every child of God must follow the precepts of God. That causes you to have a right standing with God. And we've spoken about uh, emotions, anger, uh, emotions, and murder. Jesus made it abundantly clear in the Matthew chapter 5 that he came not to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill the law. And the last session, we were talking about the attitude of the heart. Because uh, the, the law says, if you do this, you should be uh, judged or you should be uh, punished. And uh, we, we are not disputing about it. We have set examples on this platform that where there is no law, there is chaos. Where there is no law, people do what they like. So law is good. But uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And we are to guide our hearts with all diligence. So because the issues of life flows from the heart. So Jesus was saying, it starts from the heart. Mm -hmm. If your heart is focused well, or your heart is filled with the good things of God, it becomes a bit difficult for you to fall into certain yes. traps. And today we will talk, we will read from Matthew 20, uh, uh, Matthew 5, 27 to 30. That talks about, we are getting deeper now, and the, and the subjects will be a bit sensitive, and I want you to be attentive and listen to what the Spirit of God will say. It talks about adultery and moral purity. All right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and, uh, to 30, please. Okay. Um, let me bring, yes. So I read from the New King James Version, Matthew uh, chapter 5 verses 27 to 30 i read Please. you have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not commit adultery but i say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart if your right eye causes you to sin pluck it out and cast it from you for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell and if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and cast it from you for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell Reverend Minister, I think you will have to do a lot of explanation for us because before somebody goes and cast, <laughs> cut their hands off <laughs> because it's <laughs> causing them to sin. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the reading of God's word. And we pray that God will give us illumination. Jesus was again talking about the heart, the heart of a man. It doesn't necessarily mean cut your hand off. But the last of the eyes, uh, before you get into adultery or fornication, or you enter into that sin, it comes from the eyes. Oh, we appreciate a woman. You see something and your heart tells you uh, this is attractive. Mm. Yeah? So there is the last of the high, 
the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. So Jesus was implying that the sin starts from your eyes. What your eyes see, what you focus on, be, before you realize, as you keep watching, even movie, as we watch movie, or we watch people doing something, if you don't discipline yourself, and you know that this is evil, and you don't take the authority and stop watching it, some Christians will say, oh, I'm born again. I can exercise uh, a discipline. I can discipline myself. But that's not the thing. As you keep watching, what your eyes see, it draws you into it without you knowing. So Jesus was saying the art condition, again, whatever you see, if you know it's not conformable to the word of God, or you see people uh, 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 adopting some styles, and the hand results, they have been reported that this their trick leads to a uh, robbing of bank. And all that you do is to ward them. Before you realize, their strategy will be part of you. Yeah. But if you exercise faith and patience, and you know, uh, on the on the uh, WhatsApp or on the uh, Facebook, there are many things. Some of the times I tend there, and humanly speaking, if you are not careful, you keep watching, you keep watching, you keep watching. But if you discipline yourself, so Jesus was saying, he he, he doesn't say if you're un, uh, uh, literally, he saying uh, the Bible is saying cut mm -hmm. your hand off. But if that's not the implication, if you know your high is reaching out to do something which is not good, discipline that arm. Amen. Maybe tie it or put it in your pocket. Hmm. So uh, that is the implication. And uh, absolute standards are set by God himself for man. God as a standard of righteousness and morality. Like you said the other day, uh, right is right, wrong is wrong. When we were citing the example of Jesus and I say uh, 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 generous anger, or did I say, I say holy something. Anger. Holy anger. Holy yeah. anger. Yeah, holy anger. You, you just come in and put the word right. You say wrong is wrong and right is is right but the bible's taught us uh, how jesus what lord him into what he did that's why there is a part of the bible let not your anger go uh, the sun go down on your anger that means you can be angry mm. and i emphasize it's not a license to go about being angry but if somebody hit my my head to the wall I won't be happy. I won't be laughing. I will be angry. If somebody slapped me, I will be angry. But exercise discipline. So this aspect is talking of discipline. There are many, uh, about three uh, scriptures that will talk more. That's why I say this part is sensitive. Proverbs 6, 24 to 29. Then if a uh, uh, presenter finish. I can read Luke, Luke 6, 40, 43 to 46. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. He will read Proverbs 6, 24 to uh, 29. 24 to 29. I, I would like the reading of the word to establish what we are saying. So I will read the first one. Um proverbs chapter 6 verses 24 to 29 i read yes please to keep you from the evil woman from the flattering tongue of a seductress do not lust after her beauty in your heart 
nor let her allure you with her eyelids. For by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a crust of bread. Wow. <laughs> and an adulteress <laughs> will prey upon his precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be seared? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. Amen. Amen. So, you see, last, mm. last, last is a great, a, a, a strong desire for yeah. something of some, somebody. And uh, 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 the scripture went on to say that you can't play with fire. Mm. As mature as we are, there are certain things that has you know clearly that this is not going well. But if your art is not disciplined, or you don't allow the word of God to direct you, you will be taken by surprise. And before it, that's why we always came come back and say, Stop, sorry. You will say sorry. And you have done it already. And God is a forgiving mm. God. God will forgive you. But if you are not able to discipline yourself, before you realize the second time, the third time, and you become ardent. So let me read uh, Luke 6, 43 to 46. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt tree. Neither do a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit for every tree is known by its own fruit for of tongues men do not gather figs nor of bambray bush gather their grapes a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of for of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak Amen. and why call ye me lord lord and do not the things which i say mm. why call me lord lord and do not the things which i say for out of the abundance of the heart what is in your heart what do you waste uh, use your time on what do you crave for what you make time for becomes part of you. So it starts from the heart and it starts from the company you make. It starts from the uh, discussions you have. Mm, mm, mm. The discussions, corrupt discussion. Mm, mm. You, 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 you may think, oh, I'm, 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 I'm born again. I know the Bible, but Watch what you are doing. Amen. What is major to your heart? What do you conceive in your heart? What our DJ read, he said, you cannot play with fire. Fire will burn you. Yes. If there is fire somewhere, you don't go near it and say, I am macho or I, I, I know how to maneuver. Mm. That's what many Christians do. Some Christians. Yeah. That's what we do. If in ministers of the gospel, mm. you entertain women at a hard time, at places that there are no people. There are men of God out of experience and by the grace of God, if a woman says, cancel me, they will have another woman there. Mm. Mm. They won't be with them alone. Yeah. yeah. Because you are human. Yes. Brother, you are human. Yes. However uh, anointed you are, you are yes. human. So adopt some principles that will guide you. That doesn't mean you are weak, but you are playing your cards yeah. well. Yeah. 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 Something that you know somebody should bear witness. 
you said to the person coming to you to discuss that thing, I know it's sensitive, but this needs a third person. Yeah. If the person is interested, fine. But there are some things that doesn't need a third person. But there's, there are some weightier matters. It could be a man, but he came to discuss it with you and he said the pastor said this and the uh, minister said this. But if there is a third person there, yeah. there is a witness. Yeah. So wrong is wrong and right is right. And we pray tonight that God will give us strength, not by our might, not by mm -hmm. our power, but by the Spirit of God, we will be able to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. we, will, we will be able to stand tall and see the salvation mm -hmm. of the Lord. Holiness, be sanctified or set apart for a special purpose. Mm. True holiness is not passive. It's activeness. Some people, they speak. Some people, they are people of words, not of mm. actions. Long ago, I, 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 I don't like talking too much. Mm. If you can do it, do it and let's see. In major places, churches, corporate world and so on, the people who bring nice, nice suggestions when it comes to their implementation, not all, but most of them, they are the people who lack. Very, very true. So uh, it, it don't be passive, be active. And don't depend on your intellectualism or your smartness. Depend on the word of God. Allow God to direct you. Yes. In dealing with people, especially the opposite sex, allow God to direct you. Allow the hand of God to work through you. Then you will see the goodness of the Lord. May the Lord bless you this Amen. evening. And may the Lord direct your staff and cause you to see. I'll read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, and that will seal some of the things we are saying today. That he put off concerning the former dis, uh, confession, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful last, deceitful last, 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 last. What do you desire? Are you relating your desire to the uh, principles of God? <laughs> I, I, we will come there. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. When you read First Corinthians chapter six and the verse twelve, Amen. I, uh, make sure you will not be brought under the power of anything you have to have the tenacity of god the discipline of god so that when it comes to uh, 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 walking rightly with god you will be directed by the spirit that he put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful last 23 and be renewed in the, your spirit of mind and tonight i pray that you and i and we will be renewed in the spirit of Amen. our mind. Uh, and that you will put on the new man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All the old things have passed away. You, you may have been a drunkard before, but the moment you get born again, all the old, that's one wonderful thing with God. God will not remember you as a murderer. God will not remember you as a, an adulterer. God will not remember you as a liar. But are you transformed? Mm. Or are you living the old nature? That's the problem. Some, they confess, they do, but a, a bit of the old man is there. Tonight, we take authority over the old nature. We pray that God will give us st a stability in everything that we do, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And that's 24, and that you put on the new man, 
which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. May we have a right standing with God. And it, it talks about purity is the purpose of God for every believer. Pure motive. Pure worship. Speech commitment. Purity means to be unpolluted. To be clear and clean. May you be clean tonight. May I be clean Amen. tonight. May the word of God dwell in your heart richly. May you have moral purity. Know the wrong from the right. Run away from lustful things. Flee from youthful lust. Mm. And that, that brings us to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter Six and uh, uh, the verse, the verse 12, 19, and 20. If we read it, it will be very helpful. First Corinthians 6, chapter 6, verse 12. Then we jump to 19 and 20. All right, so I take that one. First Corinthians chapter 6, yeah. verse 12, 19, and 20. Mm -hmm. um, all things are lawful yeah. for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Jump into 19. 19. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Um, did I get the right one? Um, no. Yeah, it, it, 19. Is it 20? No. Have you read 20? I'm going to 19. Yeah. Or uh, do 20. you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Amen. Your body is the temple of the Holy mm. Spirit. <coughs> your body is purchased by Amen. Christ. You are not your own. If, if, if any man be in Christ, it's to hear from the Holy Spirit. That's why at times, you are about to do something and something convinces you something is holding you you know very well that what you are about to do is not right and the spirit of god it lives in you if you are truly born again it comes to live in you mm -hmm. it's with you and it's within you but one thing about the spirit of god is a gentle spirit mm -hmm. And it will not force you against your will. So when I am about to do something which is not right in the sight of God, the Spirit of God will whisper to me. That's why sometimes we say, uh, I think I had, I, I, I had a hedge. I had a hedge that this thing I'm about to do will not be right. If you know it's a good cause, and you start hearing that voice. Pray again. Pray for direction. Mm. Your body is... I can do what I want to do with my body. But your body is the temple of Christ. Child of God, you don't hold yourself. Child of God, if you are truly born of the Spirit, allow the Spirit of God to Amen. direct you. And the Spirit of God will not argue with me. The Spirit of God will only gently, gently whisper to me and give me direction. But, but the ultimate uh, uh, movement is mine. Mm. And many times we do it and we regret greatly. So, no. He said, all things are lawful. Especially if you go and you have a wife and you have a girlfriend. The, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the government will not come and arrest <laughs> yes. you. It's a lawful yes. thing. But it's not expedient. Mm. 
It's not necessary. Yes. It's not right in the sight of God. And if you are not careful and you don't discipline yourself and the last get hold of you, you will be brought under the power of it. That's where I, 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 there comes the time you want to come out of it. But you are so much soaking in it. You are sleeping in it. You are walking in it. You do everything in it. So it becomes like entanglement. I take authority Amen. to that. Every entanglement of the enemy, by the Spirit of God, we speak against it. Any attitude of anyone hearing the sound of my voice on this program, be liberated in the Amen. name of Jesus. May God set you free. And it talks about moral impurity. It's one of the root causes of confusion, conflict, and failure. Moral impurity. Mm. It is. If you if you if you are married and you 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 have a, a, a concubine, you you can't look after your children well. Yeah. You can't you can't satisfy home. Yeah. You are a divided person. And that does not bring the glory of God. And it, it, it creates confusion, conflict, and failure. Father, O oh God, set us free from the entanglement of the Amen. enemy. We take authority over every foul Amen. spirit. Oh, you may be hearing Amen. us. You want to come out. Jesus says, I will help Amen. you come out. Ah, you are regretting. Jesus is a, a God who forgives. Our God, he writes, he, he writes away your faults and your sins and he remembers mm -hmm. no more. But be determined. Allow you and make, and make you a new creature. Amen. Receive the touch of God. Amen. Our time, but we are on morality and sexuality purity. If the time is so far spent, what what is my uh, my presenter saying? Yeah, I think. If yeah, you have any questions, and we can pray. Yeah, Whatever think, you say, yeah, we do. I think um, uh, this this uh, today's session has drawn my attention to one um, important uh, character that Christians we should have. And that is the character mm. of self-denial, self-denial, mm -hmm. which can be simply explained as when a person has all the ability, the resources to afford themselves certain pleasures, but mm. they let it go, they deny themselves of it because of their relationship with Christ. It is Amen. very, very important. You have the resources, you have the right, you have the ability to afford that kind of pleasure. Nothing mm. can stop you. But because mm. of salvation, you don't do it. From the example um, um, Reverend Minister cited, you are in the United Kingdom, you have money, you have a good job, Mm -hmm. You can easily afford a concubine, <laughs> you see, mm -hmm. and probably you can do it without your wife noticing. You can, you have the ability to do it. You have the resources, mm -hmm. the money to do it. But self denial will tell you, yes, you can do it, but because of salvation, don't. And mm -hmm. there is a kind of self discipline don't. that we all should have as Christians. And because of this lack of, um, you know, self-discipline or self-denial, a lot of Christians, mm. when they, we travel ab abroad, we forget our first love for Christ. Mm. Probably mm. because when we were back home, we didn't have the resources. Mm. We didn't have mm. the chance, the opportunity to um, afford ourselves some pleasures. But when we travel mm. and we get here, uh, things are cheap. Liquor is cheap, so if you want, I want to boost, mm. I can boost, you know. Mm. Uh, it's, everything, a lot of things are cheap that you can afford. 
But then we see some of us backsliding because now mm. we can afford certain pleasures. And then we forget about, you know, our commitment to Christ. So I think it's very important that Reverend Minister mention it. Self-denial. We all need that spirit of self-denial to enable mm. us complete this journey of salvation. Thank you, Reverend Minister. I think it's time for prayer. We can yeah. lead to yeah, pray yeah, for we'll us, pray. pray for the sick, mm. those who are tormented, mm. those who have issues. Mm. Thank you, sir. Amen. 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 Thank you, DJ KB. Thank you for such a powerful addition. Amen. And we will continue next week. Amen. Father, we surrender every faculty of our being to you. Amen. We are talking of moral purity and adultery. Lord, it is not by our, our might, but it is by the Spirit of God. Amen. Lord, all things are lawful, but our prayer is that we will not be brought under the power of certain things that will not bring edification to the Lord. Amen. May we discipline ourselves. May we deny ourselves. May we be set apart for Christ. Amen. For your body, my body, is the temple of Christ. Amen. I pray that anything that will bring contamination, anything that will bring abomination, Anything that will not give you a peace of mind and anything that will cause confusion, agitation, conflict, and a failure to come into your life, we take authority and we banish it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, many of us, certain behavior has caused us so much and has deprived us of many important things. But tonight, there is a deliverer and Jesus is calling you as you come to him and as you pour your heart out unto him and as you pray, he will save you. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. I see Jesus setting somebody free. Amen. I see Jesus bringing you back the joy, the joy of his salvation. Amen. Oh, sickness will bow. Every infirmity will bow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the sick say, we are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the weak say, we are strong. And let the poor, many things have robbed us of our resources. Amen. Some have entered into undue debts because of our behavior, yes. because of certain characters. May the, uh, uh, the Spirit of God Take authority and control your outings and control your behavior and control how you live your life. Amen. Live to please God. For your body is the temple of Christ. Amen. Let Christ be formed in your heart. And Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. Tonight, call on to God. I want you to take uh, 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 some few seconds and pray, 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 pray for the intervention of in God. Of pray God. for your family. In pray for, for your pray wife. Pray, pray for your husband. Pray, pray for, for your children. Pray in the name of Jesus, I see somebody being set free. I see somebody, the entanglement is going. You can think right now that the skills is being removed. The understanding of somebody is being enlightened in the name of Jesus. Lord, see you through in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, direct for the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Father, order the step of this man I see, this woman who, who, who wants you to reach to earth. Bring comfort and bring joy to our homes. Amen. Where our children are crying and mourning, where our wives are crying and mourning, and our families are crying, may the Lord bring about the joy of his salvation. Amen. Lord, let us be people of God. Amen. Not what you know, not intellect, intellectualism, mm. not a, a, a abundance of worldly wisdom, Amen. but the wisdom of God is the principal thing. Amen. Tonight, I will not leave you until you say, I love the Lord. Amen. Tonight, myself and DJ KB, we are about to leave the platform 
but we will not leave until you give your life to Jesus. Amen. Nobody is forcing you, but the Spirit of God is talking to Amen. you. That warrant that uh, God gave us, we hand it over to you. Amen. Jesus loves you. Christ died while we were yet sinners. He died on the cross of Calvary Amen. for the redeem redemption of our sins. Amen. So tonight, if you will say to me, Brother Jacob, I love the Lord, Amen. but I am back backsliding. Or oh, for many years, I do my own thing. I want to be brought under the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take inventory of your life. Within seconds, just give your heart to Jesus. Amen. Jesus loves you. And I pray with you. We all pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I pray that you will come into my heart. You will be my Lord <coughs> and my personal Savior. Amen. I receive you into my heart. I believe unto righteousness and I confess unto salvation. Amen. You are saved. You are saved. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus loves you. I pray my last prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you for all men. For you say we should pray for all men yes. to live a quiet and peaceable life. Amen. Lord, drop into somebody's spirit the joy of your salvation. Amen. Thank you, DJ KB. Amen. Thank you, Top Online Radio. Amen. <coughs> we will come your way next week. In Jesus' mighty name. My name is J uh, Jacob Vanapoy. The Whaley Intercessors Network. You can reach me through the uh, 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 Top Online Radio. Thank you, my presenter. Thank you very much, Reverend you. Minister. Um, dear listeners and viewers, I've put on the screen the number, mm -hmm. the mobile number of Reverend Vanderpoy, which is 078-987-24108. That is 078-987-24108. Reverend Vanderpoor is the leader of the Wailing Intercessors Network. It's a network of prayer warriors. So if you have any prayer requests you want them to help you um, about, do call the number on your screen, 078-987-24108. If you also want to join the <coughs> network uh, you know, of intercessors, you can call the same number. On your screen, zero seven eight nine eight seven two four one zero eight, and you'll be blessed. Thank you very much, Reverend Minister, for your time. God willing, hopefully next week we will come your way again with another session. <coughs> Thank you very much for your time. Stay blessed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Bye bye. <coughs> Um, a tip for that was um, Reverend Jacob van der Poy of the Whaling Intercessors Network. I believe you've been blessed through this program. Just make a date and know that every Monday evening, same time, 8 to 9 p.m. UK time, you will bring your way this program. We listen to the Word of God. We pray. We bless. So please be part of this program every Monday, every Monday. I'm Midian DJ KB. I'm to this one I, a few day program, I'm from a certified accountant. And I'm more a sponsor. And think about it while we listen to some messages from them and our other sponsors. It's the expansion.
Summit 2022, the Apostolic Church International UK Area A presents Expansion Summit London 2022. This is an international impartation summit under the theme Six Charge. The summit objective is to influence and impact the world with kingdom principles. Remember, you can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. Jim Ron. The summit date is from Monday the 24th to Sunday the 30th of October 2022. Venue is London, UK. For all details, kindly visit our website www.expansionsummitlondon.org. You can also call us on plus 447-835-701-767 or plus 447-930-385-536. Expansion Summit 2022 is your season of increase and your time for expansion. Thinking of coming to Ghana now or later? Wondering where and how to go about your stay while in Ghana? Have you heard and want to experience Ghana from her food to music to culture to heritage and to tourist sites? Denilex Travel and Tours is ready to hold you down. Denilex Travel and Tours is your ultimate travel partner right from the airport to wherever your destination may be. Denilex is well equipped to handle your travel needs and be your guide throughout your stay in Ghana. Connect with us on social media at denilex underscore group or visit our website at www.denilexcompanylimited.com or call plus 233-744-431. The experience with Denilex Travel and Tours is always worth reliving. Try us. Denilex Travel and tours your ultimate travel partner this is top online radio uk the top Ghanaian radio station in the uk hailing from the eastern corridors of london bring you news views music interviews trending issues and what have you tune in to us 24 7 on our free mobile radio app. Download our free app from the Play Store and the App Store. Just search for Top Online Radio UK. Download the free mobile app and tune in to us 24-7. We stream our programs live on Facebook and YouTube. Just find us on YouTube and Facebook by searching for Top Online Radio UK. We welcome your views, comments, critiques, suggestions, etc. Just get in touch on our station line 079-029-44398. That's 079 079- Zero two nine four four three nine eight. If you are interested in working with us as a radio presenter, a radio host, or a radio panelist, do get in touch and let's talk. Call us on zero seven nine zero two nine four four three nine eight. If you want to advertise on our radio, just get in touch and let's talk. 079-029-44398 If you want to sponsor any of our programs, get in touch and let's talk. Top Online Radio UK The top Ghanaian radio station in the UK you're welcome to happy marriage ministry with reverend joe kissinger anoche building a strong and a happy marriage for a better society our vision is to build an international marriage ministry that will facilitate the eradication of marital illiteracy through biblical principles and practical knowledge in order to meet the challenges of the 21st century the digital era and the spiritual challenges in our various marriages please stay tuned
You are Alpha and Omega. You're welcome to Happy Marriage Ministry with Reverend Joe Kissinger Anoche. Building a strong and a happy marriage for a better society. Our vision is to build an international marriage ministry that will facilitate the eradication of marital illiteracy through biblical principles and practical knowledge. In order to meet the challenges of the 21st century, the digital era and the spiritual challenges in our various marriages, please stay tuned. You're welcome to Happy Marriage Ministry with Reverend Joe Kissinger Anoche, building a strong and a happy marriage for a better society. Our vision is to build an international marriage ministry that will facilitate the eradication of marital illiteracy through biblical principles and practical knowledge in order to meet the challenges of the 21st century, the digital era, and the spiritual challenges in our various marriages. Please stay tuned and practical knowledge in order to meet the challenges of the 21st century the digital hallelujah hallelujah good evening people of god this is your servant reverend joe anochi coming to your life on facebook youtube and on zoom for happy marriage program where we come to equip you where we come to build you where we come to discuss what will help you to build a healthy and a happy marriage. And I know that today your life will never remain the same. So prepare your heart, prepare, and expect something new to come your way once again. People of God, happy marriage does not come by accident. It comes by deliberate work. Marriage is a work. Marriage is a hard work. It is not an ordinary work. It is a hard work. Hallelujah. So we need a lot of a lot of strength, a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding. Because you are dealing with two separate genders where we see things totally different. Where we still need to live together, we still need to work together, and we still need to build together. And I believe that if we lack the necessary skill too. If we lack the necessary knowledge, it makes it more harder and sometimes it can become frustrating. And if you are, if you are not careful, you think that you made a, a wrong, you made a big mistake. But most of the time, it is not a mistake, it is lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of commitment. Because every good thing needs a level of commitment for it to prevail. So today, I am once again in your, in your way to bring you the truth. And today, my, my message is that we're going to discuss that our theme is causes of broken marriages, causes of broken marriages. People of God, we are living in a perilous times. We are living in a very dangerous era. The world have moved to a certain level where we are losing it, where family and marriages are under a serious attack because the, the, the pressures of life has made it so overwhelming that if we are not careful, we lose focus. We become easily frustrated, easily irritated. We become petty because of the pressures at our working place, challenges, high living costs so many things are happening but whether we like it or not the institution of marriage must still forge forward the institution of marriage must still prevail why because without marriage the society have no grounds to build everything rise and fall on marriage and through the marriage it comes to the family and the, the society depends on the family to build the family, the, to build the society. 
So tonight, I believe that we need to get to a, a point where we can sit down and analyze things and see that these things can cause broken marriages so that we will be a bit sensitive as we journey in our marital life. Hallelujah. People of God, broken marriages is a reality and is dangerous. The aftermath is unbearable, unbearably painful. Sometimes we think that we are in a marriage, we are frustrated, we want to, we want to get out of it. And after we, we've gotten out of the marriage, you see that there is a lot of chain effects. There is a lot of ripple, ripple effects, especially when children are involved. It goes beyond because when children are in the marriage, the marriage have grown past the two of you. There are other stakeholders, there are other people who are involved, who are a product of the two of you. That the children need both of the parents. And that is where most of the challenges also begins. And it also affects the growth of the children. It affects the well-being of the children. So people of God, broken marriages is not something that is every we wish for even your worst enemy. But however, it is the reality of life. That if we are not careful, if we are not vigilant, if we are not sensitive, we put our marriages on a verge, sometimes through our, our, our words, through our actions, through our behavior, through our, uh, 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 our being sometimes insensitive. But today, we'll be dealing with the causes of broken marriages. I want to give you stat statistically what it has been put on, 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 online I search according to America, seven American researchers, they said that statistically almost every 50% of all marriages will end up in divorce. That is a serious percentage. That is a serious case. So <laughs> if you are not serious with your marriage, if your heart is, is not in it, if you are, we are not ready to work we are not ready to collaborate. We are not ready to, to work as a team. We put ourselves in, a, in, a, in unnecessary statistics where we can, we can easily become a casualty. Hallelujah. In, in England, in UK, they said every four, almost about 41% of marriages will collapse, will get into divorce. Year 2020, year 2021, 20, 40% of all marriages broke down. It is alarming. It is dangerous. And the sad part that after divorce, when you are sober, then you still want to work, you still want to marry again. I've seen a lot of women frustrated, angry, want to get out. After getting our first year, second year, two years, now they feel lonely. A lot of men, they feel lonely, then they want to go again. But what caused the first one? If you don't work on it, if you don't build on yourself better than, your, than what <laughs> the, the knowledge that you had in the first marriage, you go to the second one, it can hit you again. Because time does not change anything. It is knowledge that changes you. It is knowledge that gives you the, the necessary understanding and skill to build a happy and a glorious marriage. Something that you can build to last. Hallelujah. They said, in, according to uh, some researchers in USA, they, they have estimated that about 41% of all first-time marriages will also end up in divorce. <laughs> This is serious, 41% of first marriages. So that is why sometimes when I look into the social media, people of God, 
when I look in, in, look at the social media and you see married couples dancing and doing all the coordination and doing all the choreographies and all this thing, sometimes you laugh because we are preparing, we are putting so much in, the, in just the marriage ceremony that will last just about maximum 10 hours outrageously 12 hours but you have a lifetime to embark on this journey but most of the time we don't we don't take the, we don't take the preparation serious because we think that marriage is 100 meters but for our information marriage is a marathon it's a marathon you need perseverance. You need endurance. You need lightness of heart. You need stamina. You need focus. You need commitment. <laughs> Before, when you see people celebrating their 10th anniversary, 15 years of, an, uh, of marriage, 25th anniversary, silver, their golden jubilee, 50 years anniversary, ask them, they will tell you that it did not come on a silver platter. There were a lot of sacrifices. There were a lot of endurance. There were a lot of perseverance. There were a lot of, 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 of crying and everything. But because they were focusing. Because they, they made up their mind. And they, are, they were able to push through. To get to where when we see them, we celebrate them. But we are living in a, in a generation where people are very uncommitted to anything. Especially, especially the digital age generation. They are not committed to most of, most of things in life. We don't have patience to, to wait for anything. We are fast, fast food generation. Microwave generation. When you put a computer on, when any slight delay, we get irritated. We cannot wait for anything anymore. But my sister, my brother, marriage is not for boys. Marriage is not for girls. Marriage is for mature people. Because everything depends. The society, the community, the church, all the institutions depend on marriage and family. So when you are about to make a decision, when you are embark on this institution, it is very important to know what we are doing. When you're talking about causes of broken marriages, number one of causes of broken marriages is lack of better preparation. Lack of better preparation. People of God, a lot of people are eager to marry. And a lot of singles, they are burning to marry. They, they look at their friends, all their friends are, 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 are now married and they also want to marry to prove a point. We don't marry to prove a point to anyone. People of God, it is sometimes better to wait and prepare better before you, you go in. For lack of better preparation, they said the five P's, proper preparation prevent poor performance. I repeat, proper preparation prevent poor performance. It means that when we prepare well, we can go in and perform well. What, what am I talking about? When you, talk, you want to marry, you can, as a counselor, you speak to a lot of people, you can see that they are in the marriage, but they, they have no clue. They don't even understand. Everyone gets into the marriage with their own mindset, with their own demands, with their own philosophies, with their own ideologies, and that they are not ready to budge. They are not ready to change. They are, they are static they are stuck in their own ways and they still want to marry. 
And in marriage, you need to be flexible. You cannot be in marriage when you are not flexible. Because when you're talking about the root cause, the root cause of marriage, when you, the word marriage, it means that you got to mix together. You got to marinate. So if you are not flexible, they cannot marry you. They cannot put you together. Because the Bible says, and the two shall become one. And the two shall become one. How can two become one when they are not flexible, when they are not soft enough to allow themselves to be married together, to be mixed together so that they can lose their, their individual identity and become a unique identity that God has intended to build. Because God peace two people and said, now you are one. Why? Because he wants to bring a whole new identity. Something glorious, something powerful. Something that can do more than individual. Hallelujah. So as a, as, a, as a child of God, as a man, as a woman, you got to understand that when you don't prepare well and you move into marriage, it's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for frustration. It's a recipe for misery. And a lot of people, unfortunately, we are miserable, we are frustrated in the marriage. Everybody is doing what he or she wants because we, did not, we didn't have any good preparation. No good premarital counseling. Sometimes if we had it, they ask you, have you bought your this? Have you bought your wedding dress? Have you bought uh, um, uh, this thing? When you go to your, your husband's house, make sure you, you cook for him. Uh, as a man, when your wife is upset, pick your, 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 your shirt and go, and go out. <laughs> like we play, we, we tell people things that, is, that cannot equip them for the journey that they are about to embark on. Because this is a union that, that is going to create and build the next generation. So it is not, it, it's not something we take it lightly. For you to get a driving license, you have to go to driving school. And after going through driving lesson, they have to test you and make sure that will you be safe of driving? Will you be safe on the road? Will you endanger other, other uh, cars, other drivers? You will not kill yourself and also kill others. When they are able to see, to test you and know that now you, you know how to control the steer. You, now you know how to navigate, how to give priority, how to take priority. Now you are safe on the road, then that is why they pass you and give you driving license. But in marriage, nobody tests us. So we, we, we see a lady, she has a, a Coca Cola ship, she's beautiful, she's this and this and this and this and that. We get all the infatuation, we jump in. Oh, the man has a car, the man has a good job. The man, so we look at all these things that cannot sustain when the test of time comes. Because when you lack preparation, when you are not equipped to function, because we are going, you are going to function as a husband, you are going to function as a wife. Do you have what it takes to function as a wife? Do you have what it takes to function as a husband? Do you have what it takes to function as a wife and a mother? Do you have what it takes to function as a husband and a father? <laughs> it is not a chaplain. That it comes with serious responsibilities, with challenges, with pressure, with demands that will test your patience, that will test your finances, that will test your character. People of God, why almost 50% of marriages will end up in divorce? It is most of the time based on the preparation. Because when you prepare well, it takes, it takes 
sham a doctor seven years to become a medical doctor. Go to medical school. Seven years. Equip. It takes almost about three years for you to become a nurse. Going to nursing, nursing school. Have your degree. And hours of uh, uh, they will take you hours of, uh, uh, of, of practical at the hospitals, going through situations, going through certain things, and giving you all that you need so that when you come out, you can now function as a, as a nurse. You can now function as a doctor. But when it comes to marriage, when even the church said, you need to have three months in premarital counseling. Hey, this one is too much. I, 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 my sister, we even need, it takes somebody three years to become an accountant. Why do you think that you can take even three, three months? It's is too, is too long for you to become a, a wife or a husband. So, it means that you don't want to prepare, but you want to go in. And how can you function? If you, you've never married before, and sometimes you've never even seen any good marriage around you, and you, you, you want to build a happy marriage, but you don't have the necessary skill, the necessary knowledge, the necessary mindset, the necessary ideology how you can become a wife how you can become a husband so when we lack better preparation it sets it put us on the on the premises that our marriage become, become shaky. Because the word of God said, according to Psalm, Psalm 11, verse 3, say, when the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation are destroyed, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The preparation is your foundation. The better foundation, the, the better and the stronger the house becomes. So when you allow, we allow ourselves to build a better foundation, better preparation, the storms will come, the challenges will come, the threats will come, the pressures will come. But because the foundations are strong, it's able to handle it. It's able to withstand it. When the torrents comes against the house, the house will remain. It has no, it, it, that, it's not that the, the torrents will not come. Jesus said he will build on the rock. When the torrents come against it, it will stand. But those who build on the, on the shallow sand, when the torrents come, it collapsed. And a lot of marriages are built on a shallow sand. There's no foundation. There's nothing under, under the ground. And that is where people, that is when people prepare more for their, for their engagement and their wedding than the marriage itself. Hallelujah. So, the question is, how better prepared are you? You are, in the, you are in the marriage. And you see there's so much frustration. You are regretting. You want to leave. But I want to tell you this evening. Did you prepare well? How strong is your foundation? What substance did you put in your foundation? Did you build it on God's principle? Or you build it on social media principle? Did you build your marriage on, on Hollywood and Nollywood? 
principle or you build it on God's principle. Because if you build it on God's principle, you are building a solid foundation. You are building something that can build to last. Humbling yourself. Allow the word of God to direct you. Not your emotions, not your feelings, not friends, not social media, not the TV, not the Hollywood, because they are just acting. But let the word of God, which is our rock, build on the rock, build on the rock. And I believe that as we prepare well, buy books, buy marital books, marriage books, go to seminars, listen to messages, go to Happy Marriage Gem, YouTube, listen, now we are living in 21st century, the digital age, use YouTube, there are so, so many materials out there that can equip you. Prepare well as a singer before you go take time study. Know, understand men, understand women. Know your responsibilities. Know your requirements. How, what you need for you to function as a good husband. What you need for you to function as a good wife. Don't just assume that you can, when you go in, you, you can do better. Girlfriend and boyfriend is totally different from married couples. When you are boyfriend and girlfriend, most of the time, we, we present our rep to each other. And, and whenever you meet, everybody is, is pretending sometimes. When, when we meet, everybody is putting up their best behavior. But when you Get into the real marriage. The Bible says, and Adam and Eve, they were naked and they were not ashamed. That is where you see the nakedness. The nakedness means that you see all the flaws of your spouse. You see that when he sleeps, he snores. You see that they are, some of them are messy, they are not organized. And you are a very organized person. And you still have to live with an, un, an un, unorganized person. You put it there, they'll put it there. They will get on your nerves. <laughs> so if you, do, if you do not prepare well to accommodate and assimilate, you, you, you go in and you want to get out. Now, the, 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 the lifespan of marriages nowadays is one year, six months. After all their coordination done, they get in, they want to get out. Or they are just frustrated, crying miserably. And some of them are still in the marriage and start having extra, extra marital affairs because they are not happy in their marriage. So they are taking solace, they are taking solace with their ass. And it becomes filthy, becomes dirty. All because we did not prepare better. And if you are in and you are frustrated, you have to go back to the roots. That's where you need reinforcement. When your foundation is not weak, it's, it's weak and you, do not, you build it and you find cracks, then you have to go back to the foundation again. And we call in engineering, construction engineering, we call reinforcement. You have to dig around it and put more concrete and more iron so that you can fortify the foundation. Because you cannot break everything. Otherwise, the cracks will keep on coming. The next thing, people of God, that causes marital breakdown is wrong choices. One, if we, are, if we lack better preparation. Two, wrong choices. When you choose a wrong person, for a long journey, you'll be frustrated. You got to know where you are going in life. You have to know, as pers personally, you have to know yourself. Know if you know yourself, you know who can fit into your life. Not everybody can be the best partner. It does not mean that the person is bad, but maybe the two of you cannot. 
Your temperament cannot even accommodate each other. Both of you are hot tempered. And you will kill yourself. It's going to be fire in Soweto every day. So you got to know yourself. I am a quick tempered. I, am a, I have a short circuit. And the person who is approaching you to is a short circuited person. Hot tempered. Both of you are fire. There's going to be a, a Iraq war every day in the home. In the home. So you got to know yourself. So that you don't make a wrong choice. You need someone opposite. Who, who, who has patience. That you can blend. That it can neutralize you. You, you have to. If, if, you have to marry. Someone who is a man. Who has matured. Not a boy. If you are a lady. You need a man, not a boy. Because most of the people with six parts and all this thing, and they, they, some of them are still boys. They have not matured from their boys' school to become me and male. That's not, that's not give you the authority to go into marriage. Hallelujah. But being a man, the Bible said, according to Genesis 2, verse 24, the Bible said, for this cause, a man will leave his father. A man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. So it is men who leaves and cleave. Boys don't leave. They can live physically, but they don't live emotionally. They don't live psychologically. And they don't cleave. Because when you say you are cleaving, it means that you are cleaving with everything, including your phone. Including your phone, because phone has become one of the, uh, the, the Bible that people don't want to release it. So, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one. So, if you go and take a boy, when he's a boy, he, one, he's not ready to settle, even though he's in the marriage. He always wants to go and hang out with friends. He always, always wants to find a way to beat the migration. Always want to find a way, still chatting, still doing things. Still, he, 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 he has not come to a, a state of mind that he said, now I have left and I'm cleaving. When you make a decision, the mother can still change it because he's still a mommy's boy. And also for a man, you when you are making a decision for a woman, a woman you don't go for a woman, you go for a wife. The Bible said, he who finds a wife, he who finds a wife has found a good thing and obtained the favor of God. So it, that is why I said, for a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So you cleave to wife, not girls. Because when you cleave to a girl, they are still in the marriage, but they will still be comparing you to their former boyfriend. They will still be comparing you to their, their sugar daddy, who, flash, who, who spoiled them with money. But you are married to a man whom you are building a new life before. The, the old man has finished and made his money, and now he's just looking for someone to spoil. And you uh, uh, accidentally pass their way and they spoil you, and that era is over. But if you are, she has not become a, a wife, she's still a girl who is still living in the fantasy world. Who is not ready to accept that my husband, the man have left and now want to cleave with me. And I need to be sober. I need to be humble to cleave with this man so that we become one and build a new future together. Because the, those you are seeing who have made it, another woman humble and cleave with them and build a life together. And now when you see that you admire them, my sister, there was a price to pay. Great things does not come. Great things doesn't come cheap. There's always price to pay. So when a man marries a girl, you are in serious problem. When a wife marries a boy, you are in serious problem. 
you will cry every day. When there's issue, they leave. Any slight thing, they treat you of divorce. Any slight thing, if, as if you are married to a girl, any slight thing, they are treating you of divorce. I am leaving you. I am this. I am living. Every day they are living. How can you build a marriage when every day you are threatened of living? The Bible says, and you shall leave your father and mother. It's not saying you should leave your family, your, house, your marriage. You shall leave your, your father and mother and cleave to, you, to your husband. And the husband to cleave to the wife. And you become one. So when there's issue, we got to sit down and fight it. We got to fight together to win. People of God, as children of God, I said earlier, the percentage that every fifth, every almost fifty percent of marriages will end up in divorce, and these are the petty things that we ignore. These are the things that we we overlook, but these are the foundation that if we we miss it and we don't revisit it and find a way that we can repair it, it will create serious challenge on the way. Wrong choices. Marriage is a marathon. Don't marry in Sodom. Lot married in Sodom. You have to look at yourself. Look what you stand for. Your faith. Your belief. And know that the woman or the man that I am marrying to, I can go this journey with him or with her. Sometimes things will work when you are in certain environment. Lot married to a sodomite. When everything was, when they were in Sodom and living certain lifestyle, it was okay for the woman. But when God told Lot, I am about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, now is the time for you to leave. It became difficult for the woman. While they are leaving, God said, don't look back. But because she has been sodomized, she could not let Sodom go. Some people are married, but they cannot let their Sodom go. And that is why you have to make sure that the person that you are married, you are not married from Sodom. Because they have a certain lifestyle that they are not ready to let it go. So when God speaks, it becomes difficult for them to, to obey. And the Bible says, so when they left, and Lot knew that he was living with his wife, but the wife could not let Sodom go. And she looked back, disobeyed the word of God. And when you are married with someone who constantly disobeyed the word of God, you know that they will become pillars of salt. A lot of people are living with pillars of salt. That nothing is working. Get to a point you have to move on. Because you cannot marry pillar of salt. So Lord have to keep moving. Because the wife has become a pillar of salt. Maybe your husband has become a pillar of salt. God have mercy on us. We can easily become pillars of salt in our marriages. People of God, wrong choices. Wrong choices. The next thing that causes... The, I will take this gradually. The next thing that causes broken marriages is omission of process or impatient, impatience of process. We don't want to be processed. You see people who have gone through process and built a solid marriage. You don't ask them the price that they pay. You don't ask them the sacrifices that they have made. You don't ask them the endurance that they have endured. 
You don't ask them the things that they they wanted they they, they wanted but they, they they refused. Why? Because for the sake of the marriage. Process is is the ground where we build anything to la- build to last. Anything that does not go through process cannot te- cannot face the test of time. Process. God created Adam one day. Adam was faced with a challenge. Adam messed up. Jesus went through 30 years of process. Jesus was tempted three times by the devil. He overcame it. Why? Process. When there's absence of process, any any quality thing go through robust process. When you buy a suit of Jojo Armani or Hugo Boss, even the fabric that they will use have gone through serious process. It has been processed so that it can withstand washing and whatever. That is why it will remain, it will, it will last for a longer time than when you buy any 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 anything that have no, have no name or Chinese made. It's a mass production. Don't let your marriage be a mass production. But allow process. What, how do we process? Look for good mentors who can mentor you. Look for good pre- postmarital counseling, seminars, teachings, married, married books. Build, allow yourself to be processed, to change your perception. Because sometimes, fortunately, unfortunately, maybe you came from a broken, a broken home. So you did not see any marriage. Or maybe you came from a, a home where the marriage was not the best. And if you don't process, you repeat it unconsciously because sometimes you, it has built in your subconscious. And it is there and it can affect you unconsciously. And you got to know how can you change it? It is through renewing of our mind. God said, do not conform, but renew your mind. Transformation comes through renewing of our mind through the word of God. Let knowledge shape you, not your feelings. Let knowledge shape, transform you, not your emotions. Because your emotions are not are not stable. Your feelings are not stable. But knowledge is stable. Knowledge. Allow knowledge to process you. Have patience to be processed. Because Rome was not built over a night. Any good thing that need to last, any any good for SUV need to be built so that it can handle the rough terrain. Let your marriage be built so that it can handle all kind of sort of weather. Because whether you like it or not, marriage comes with a lot of pressure. Marriage comes with a lot of challenges, a lot of demands. As marriage progress, children come in. As children come in, they also bring another pressure. They bring financial pressure. They bring uh, 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 challenges. As the children even grow to every stage, their challenges makes even the marriage even more tougher. People of God, process. When it comes to, you ask average couples, how many books do you have concerning marriage? How many books have you read after your premarital counseling? None. 
How many tapes do you see this or do you have none? We don't have anything to allow ourselves to be processed. But we are still hoping to build to last. How can we build to last if we don't allow ourselves to be processed, to be transformed from a girl to a woman who becomes a wife, to be transformed from a boy and, and to become a man who can function as a husband, who can handle emotional tantrums of a woman <laughs> who can handle the ego of a man <laughs> because as women has their emotional being so are men also are, have egos and it was not put there by the devil it was put there by God we were made <laughs> with that and both of us have to handle. Women talk, I, I don't, I, I'm emotional being. Yes, you are emotional being. Nobody disputes about But and the men are also e have egos. That if you, don't, if you don't handle the ego, you cannot get your way. That is how God has created it. And both of us have to live with understanding. And have the knowledge to handle these two things. The ego and the emotions. When you glory, you pay for it. When you glory it as a woman, you, you talk to your man anyhow, you try to, you want to advise him, you want to help him, but if you don't hand, handle it and it touches it, it will not penetrate. The same thing as a man, as a, a man if you talk to your woman anyhow, it gets through her emotion, it will, it will flip up. So both of us need knowledge. That is why marriage, you need more knowledge. Hallelujah. The next thing I'll talk about that causes marital breakdown, marital breakdown is marital illiteracy. Marital illiteracy. For the word, the word of not, the word of God said in Hosea four six, it said, "For lack of knowledge, my people perish. For lack of knowledge, my people." perish. My sister, my brother, I know sometimes there's demonic attacks. Sometimes there, there's demands. Sometimes there's a lot of things. But when we lack knowledge, we can easily perish than demonic attack. How you say things, how you behave, how we respond to situations, how we are able to anticipate things. Because whether we like it or not, marriage is between a male and a female. That is what God established. Who is the institutor of marriage? He said, for this cause, a man will leave his father and cleave to his wife. So it is Adam and Eve. So therefore, you are dealing with two genders with our gender differences where we see things differently where we hear things differently where we we perceive things differently but we still have to live together to build that is a paradox <laughs> it doesn't make sense but god said your differences should not should not drift you apart, but it should complement you. It will be, it, it's a complementary relationship. Because I don't know, I don't need two, the same people, they will become, they will become excess. You got to be different, so that you bring diversity. Because diversity brings creativity. Instead of allow our diversity to bring creativity, sometimes we use it to fight. When we lack the marital knowledge, whatever you don't understand, you can be frustrated by. Whatever you have a limited knowledge, 
you will not you will not enjoy the full gadget or the full products. You need a product knowledge. We need product knowledge. You need to understand what you you are holding in your hand. What God has placed in your in your home. You cannot we cannot live in assumptions. We cannot live with half big knowledge because half big knowledge is also dangerous. Unfortunately, when you when you when you bring marriage program like this, only few people are ready to sit down and listen. But let somebody start insulting. Somebody start uh, doing all kind of things. You see the, the comment. You see because we, we are living in the age where we want entertainment. Where our homes are crumbling. Things that can build us. That can shape us. That can change our perception. That can change our mindset. For our life depends on us. Your life, your destiny depends on your marriage. Marital illiteracy. For lack of knowledge. When you lack knowledge, without prayer, you perish. Even when you are praying and you lack knowledge, you perish. You need knowledge, you need prayer. You don't leave one. You need the two. You, when we lack understanding, according to First Peter 3, Seven, the Bible says, Men dwell with them with understanding for, for, for their weaker vessel. It is also vice versa. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 1, it said, For it said, The wise woman will build her home, but the foolish woman will tear it down. So we need wisdom, we need understanding. Understanding means that you humble yourself to stand under so that you can see what is in it and you know how to handle it. Understanding comes through humility. In be humble enough to understand, know the, where they are coming from. Because you've been shaped differently. Your upbringing is totally different. Your experience, your past experience are different. Your temperaments are different. Your personality traits are different. What have shaped them? The home that they grew up in. The marriage that they saw when they were growing up in their formative stage. Have shaped them that it will take grace to change, it, to change their perception and change their philosophy. You have to know the, 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 the pains and the disappointment that they went through that have made them to become who they are. The environment that they grew up in that sometimes it is a, is a, is a, 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 you have to be strong to survive. All these things are factors that as a, for you to 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 have a successful marriage, to handle so that you will not break the marriage. Because if you don't know the person you are married to, and it is both, no only one have to do. It is both we have to know because all of us have been shaped certain way. Even our careers have shaped us unconsciously. Our 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 careers can also shape us. Hallelujah. So the question is, have you taken time to have the, 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 the knowledge do you know who is your wife? Do you know what has shaped her? Do you know the, his philosophy? Do you know the root cause? Do you know why he he is behaving certain ways. Do you know the man? Have you have have you studied him? Have you studied what what he has been shaped with? 
Do you know his fears? Do you know his dreams? Do you know his aspirations? All these things, when you ignore, because you have to know where the person is coming from and where the person wants to go so that both of you can work together. You'll be sensitive to his past and able to work with his present and help him also to achieve his, his, his future. People of God today, when you're talking about marital illiteracy, it's one of the major cause of broken marriages. Because we are in it, but we are illiterate. You can be a doctor. You can be an engineer who is doing very well in your profession, but sometimes in the area of marriage, you are total illiterate. You have no clue. You are a manager controlling about 100 or 50,000 people. But when you come home, your wife and your children alone, you are struggling. It shows you that marriage is not profession. Marriage is an institution that you need to be illiterate in that area. You need to educate yourself for you to function, for you to enjoy it, for you to be blessed in it. A lot of times, you, you sit down with couples, and when they are talking, and they are, they are, they are stuck, and they are, they, are, they are so angry, and why they are angry, you can, you can see that this is non far but they believe in their non fact They believe in it. And you can see that this is pure marital illiteracy. And you still have to have patience to open their eyes. And they don't want to know. Because they want to have their way. And their way is killing them. Their way is frustrating them. Their way is making them miserable. Their way it's also killing someone, but they still don't want to accept. Why? Because they, are, they lack the understanding. They lack the knowledge. Because knowledge is acquisition of right information. Understanding is the ability to analyze the information you have acquired and know the one that can work for you and how you can work it out. And wisdom is the ability to apply the, the analyze information and you know when and where. People of God. People of God. Hallelujah. People of God. So, so when, you, when you're talking about Marital illiteracy, it is very important that as couples, we have to take our time, educate ourselves, know what we are doing, so that we, we don't hurt each other unconsciously. Because most of the time, I always tell people that sometimes it is not that people are bad or they are wicked, but sometimes they don't have the knowledge that they need to function. So they, they appear as a bad person. They appear as a bad person. And unfortunately, whether you appear as a bad person or not, sometimes your spouse will not be merciful. Because they, their expectations are not being met. And that is where the problem begins. Because we are living in a time that people are lovers on themselves. They are lovers on themselves. They love themselves. We are so self-centered. Next week, I will continue with the other factors. But today, I spoke about these four things 
that will lead us to broken marriages. If we can work on it, when we, we are able to prepare ourselves better, proper preparation will prevent poor performance. Wrong choices. M marriage is a marathon. Don't rush to make a choice. Take time. You marry based on where you are going, not where you are. I repeat. You marry based on where you are going. You marry based on where you are going, not where you are. When you understand this, when you know where you are going, you are able to make a better choice. You are able to do some, to, to, to choose someone who can, who can complement you to become who God has destined to be. Because both of you have destinies that need to be blended together. But when you pick the right person, as Lot did, he will end up losing and, and end up with a salt. Don't end up with a salt. Make a right choice. David made a right choice and was able to marry a wise woman, Abigail. Because Abigail was able to see a king in David while David was just a, 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 a wanderer, wandering on the, on the wilderness. Right choice. Omission of process. Allow process to build you. Be humble enough to go through process. No great thing is built overnight. Great relationship. Have patience. Have largeness of heart. Have endurance. Accommodate each other. Give space for each other. Allow each other to grow. Because time will help us as you are working. The best, you, you will emerge. Your best will start emerging. When process process you. Because some of us, we, you are just a raw goal. You've got to go through process to be refined. So that you become the best of you. And last thing, marital illiteracy. Don't be illiterate in your marriage. We should not be illiterate, we should be literate. Have knowledge. Acquire enough knowledge. Analyze it. Have understanding. Know how things work. Know how women work. Know how women behave. Know how men behave. Understand men, understand women. And when you have understanding, then you are able to apply wisdom. As the word said, for a wise woman will build her home. A wise woman will build her home. Today, I, I was sent by God to tell you that. Let's go back to the drawing board. If you did not have better preparation, go back to the foundation. Bible says when the foundation is destroyed, you cannot do much. But go back. You can reinforce it. Make a, the choice you cannot, but sometimes you have to do you have to make the best out of it. And process well and build knowledge. May God bless you. May God shine his countenance upon you. May God favor you. May God give you what you need to build a solid marriage. May your marriage never break down. I pray that any spirit of divorce, may it come not around you. May God grant you the spirit of humility to humble, to equip yourself to build a healthy and a happy marriage. May you not be counted among statistics of divorces. But may you be someone who can build for the next generation to emulate. May you be a role model to many. In the mighty name of Jesus. May God bless you. I'll continue the, 
the second part next week where I will deal with other factors. But for now, I bless you. May the grace, marital grace come upon you. And may you do well in your marriage. May you enjoy your marriage, not to endure it. God bless you. My honorable wife, Mrs. Amechi, God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Nobo, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. Mr. Mr. Joyce, God bless you. God bless you, Brad Kofi. Rich, Richmond, God bless you. Everyone that I can watch me on t- YouTube and other channel, God bless you all. I salute you. Until we meet next week, Sunday, the 8.30, the same time, the same place. And on Friday, join me on Taking Authority Prayer Line, half 10 UK time. And I know that you will not you will not be part of statistics, but you will be part of the 50% of married that survive. May the light of God be upon you to meet again. Shalom, peace to you. Bye-bye.